Actions are a great way to provide more interactivity and drill down capabilities for the end users of your dashboards. So first we'll take an example of an existing dashboard where I already have some actions built into this and then we'll walk through an example together of how to create some of these from scratch. So consider what we have on the screen here where I've got a few different slices of my data by industry, by time, by customers, by geography. And while I could add a number of controls on the top to allow my users to be able to filter by any of those, I oftentimes want to let the analytics and visualizations themselves drive where I want to drill down. So what I mean by that is if I see that finance is my biggest segment, I'd want my users to be able to select this slice and get more details about that from the rest of my dashboard. So you can see here that when I select the finance slice, all of the visualizations have updated. So everything here is applied a filter for just industry equals finance, my trend, my customers, my geo, everything on the dashboard is filtered. Similarly, if I were to select one of the months here from my time trend, I can get more details about the transactions that occurred just in that month. So generally this concept of being able to make a selection in a visual and get more details about that and filter your dashboard to just what you selected. That's what actions enable you to do. So part of the new part of actions is uh, we've added a new type of action called a filter action. Uh, there used to be and, and still is a concept of a URL action, which still exists, but well, there's a new entry point to those, which I'll show you in a second. But I also have a URL action defined on my map here. So if I were to select Seattle, first the filter action is triggered to filter the visuals on this sheet. But if I right click, I get my context menu, which gives me more options of what I can do. So the URL actions that I've previously created are now here in the right click context menu. So where it says see details for Seattle, this is actually a URL action, which brings me to the second tab in this dashboard, the second sheet, and applies a filter here. So now you can see my city equals Seattle for my table. So I just wanted to point out that the URL actions are still there. They're just available via right click now and the filter actions are a new addition to uh, this new kind of broader feature set which we're just calling actions in general. So now we have a little bit of an idea of how this works. Let's now take a look at an example where we can create some of these from scratch. So I'm now going to open an analysis where I've got a few visuals configured on here but I haven't set up any actions yet. So the first thing that you'll notice is a new button over here on the left hand side which says actions. So if I select that I get a couple of options. One is that I can define a custom action and there's also a shortcut where I can quick create a filter action that filters all the visuals on that same sheet using all the fields, all the dimensions from that particular visual. So this is really handy and I, I use this quite often. So for instance, I have this first visual selected and I'm going to use the shortcut to say filter same sheet visuals. So what this does is it just created an action for me on the top, which I can further edit if I'd like. But before we do that, let's just take a look at what this does first. So here I'm looking at the number of customers I have by industry. And if I make a selection now on finance, both other visualizations on this sheet have now filtered just to my selection. So the time trend is just finance and also my table. You can see what's being filtered. If you click on the filter icon, it will also tell you what filters are being applied to that visual. Same thing on this time trend. If I want to add a filter action for this as well, I could filter same sheet visuals with this quick create, or I could also do the same thing by creating a custom action. So just to show you what this looks like, uh, we'll use this for this example. So you can give it a name, so I'll call this filter by week. There's two ways to trigger the action, and this is the activation section. So select just means a normal left mouse click select, um, whereas menu option is a right click on your mouse 
or if you don't have any select options configured, then the normal context menu will just show this as an option in that context menu. So usually select is what I'd want to do, but there's if, uh, if there's more than one action that I'd like to configure, then oftentimes I'll add the others into the menu option. Uh, just a quick note, if you want to trigger multiple actions, only one of them can be as a select, and then you can have as many as you'd like for the menu option. So if I leave this on select, uh, the action type, so I mentioned we previously had the URL actions, and then the filter actions have just been added, so we're, we're kind of focusing on the filter actions for now. Uh, the scope, I can choose which field I want to pass in the filter. Um, I'm only using one dimension in this particular visual, which is the date field. Uh, but if I was using more uh, dimensions there, I can choose which ones I'd like to send. So I'll go through an example on that on my table here. And then lastly, which visuals do I want to filter to? What, what are my target visuals? Again, the default is all visuals on that sheet, but you can select and just control uh, individual visuals if you'd like. So if I save this as is, and now I trigger this, so here I've selected this particular week, now notice all the transactions in my table here just for that week, and my gauge chart here, excuse me, my donut chart has filtered again just to that week. So for some of the more advanced options in here, let's go to this table and say that we want to define another action. So let's leave it on select. It's also going to be a filter, but here we're going to change the filter scope to be just from a selected field. So if I left it on all fields, it's going to send every combination of dimensions I have here as the filtering field. So it's basically just going to show me that one transaction in my other visuals. But if maybe I want to send just a higher level category like the state or that particular date or the industry or the customer name, uh, you can control and just send one of those items. So for instance, let's just do an example where I'm just going to send the state as the filter. So now if I make a selection on one of these rows, it's going to highlight all rows that are also from that state as well as send that filter action. So for instance, again, if I click on California, and if I scroll down here, all other rows of data that come from California are also highlighted, just indicating to me as a user that these are the rows that are also being filtered in these other visuals. So it highlights the appropriate ones in my table and sends California as a filter. Again, I can confirm that just by clicking on this filter icon on the other visuals. So for some more advanced examples of this, let's take a look at one other dashboard that I have here, which also has a number of filter actions defined here on the top. Uh, similar to how we, we just configured those in our other dashboard. Um, but if I scroll down a little bit here, we have some of the menu options configured on this one. So for instance, if I click on this particular row in my pivot table, the default action on select is to send the order ID to this visual below. So I'm looking at the order details here, and then this is telling me the shipping information for that particular order. And again, notice all these rows are highlighted because we're sending the order ID itself, and these all share the same order ID. But if I right click, there's a number of more menu options here available for me. So I could look at the shipping details for that entire customer, or I could look at the shipping details for that particular uh, product, or I could trigger a URL action and actually go search this particular customer uh, on the web or I could see the quantity for this. So if I choose this last option, this is using both the capability to select what field I want to send as the filter and also choose the target visuals, whereas this is updating just this visual here on the right, which shows my total inventory or my product availability for that uh, product that I picked. So again, if I choose that right click and see quantity available for this product, it's sending the ID for that to this one here on the right. And to trigger the URL action, works the same way. It just, the, the result, instead of doing some filtering, actually launches the URL for me. 
So I hope that gives you a good feel just uh, in the beginning for how these actions can be used and how powerful they are in terms of letting your users be able to ask and answer a lot more questions uh, on a given dashboard by uh, enabling them to be able to make selections and kind of look at cross sections of the data uh, on that same sheet. So rather than creating filters and drop down menus and controls uh, using the parameters for every single field in the data set, uh, this is just a, a more efficient and, and more intuitive way for your users to apply those kind of filters and drill downs. So hope you enjoy the new actions and we will see you in the next video.